Timer's on. So today is uh, officially the second birthday of Hot Chicken Takeover. Uh, cool, thank you. So officially what that means is two years ago, uh, we had people waiting um, two hours in line to get served raw chicken because we didn't know what we were doing. Um, uh, thankfully, we've come a far way from that. Uh, so they, they asked me to speak tonight about the start and, and start with the start. And so for us, uh, the way I want to illustrate the start is uh, to step back from the romance of the legend. Um, because when you're in it, there's not that much romance. I think the romance comes in hindsight. So I have three kind of funny stories I want to share about our experience that I think indicates what entrepreneurship's all about. So at the very beginning, um, we had a uh, less than desirable first location uh, and first kitchen. And part of that for us was this giant utility sink that literally sat in the center of the room. Underneath that sink, there was a hole. You couldn't see the bottom of the hole. Um, but you knew through the course of the evening of doing dishes, and at that point, we didn't have extra hands, so it was everybody that cooked food shifted to the dish tank afterwards. And it really became part of the legacy of hot chicken that everybody starts on the dish tank, no matter who you are. This particular dish tank uh, wasn't great, and it would always back up. And so generally around 6 or 7 o'clock every day after we'd serve, somebody would have to draw the short straw, roll up their sleeve, and literally stick their hand down this drain to clear the drain without being able to see the bottom. And it was, that's how the day almost always ended. And uh, it's something that a lot of the people on our team still talk about romantically. And just when we thought we were out of the woods and we moved to our next location, we had an instance where two of our staff members, both smokers, were standing in the kitchen looking at one another saying, hey, I'm going to go out on break. Can you throw me your cigarette lighter? Great. Um, they were standing in front of a live deep fryer and they uh, fumbled a two-foot pass with a disposable Bic lighter that jumped into a fryer, a fryer that's running at 375 degrees. And so there's a moment, moment of panic, of course, and people are trying to figure out what's happened. I was out in the dining room and I heard people screaming. Um, so if you're looking for what to do when a uh, Bic lighter goes into a deep fryer, you should put a cookie sheet face down on the deep fryer and get the hell out of the way. Uh, we didn't do that. Um, <laughs> that's what we should have done. Um, but it explodes um, and it shoots. It, it's a, as you imagine in a movie, uh, what happens when dynamite that's waterproof goes off underwater. Um, it was just hot oil um, and it shot everywhere. And thankfully nobody was critically injured. And just when we thought we were out of the woods, uh, we had a recent experience where um, we had switched around some bank accounts. We didn't know this at the time, but our credit card processing, uh, all of the payments from all the sales we made for a week, actually three weeks, stopped getting deposited to our bank account. It was a payroll week. And we wondered, how are we going to make payroll? And where did all of our money go? Um, but it, it, we didn't have enough time to process it. We had enough time to try to figure out how to make payroll. And so what that amounted to was my wife and I digging through our recycle bin and our trash can to find any promotional credit card offer that we could uh, dig up the code and cash so that we could get enough money into our account to make um, payroll. Now, thankfully, we caught the air and we had the money and we weren't in the dire straits we thought. But this is what, you know, the path of an entrepreneur looks like. It sounds crazy to call it the path of legend. And so as I, as I reflect on this, it sounds kind of romantic now because it's hindsight. And I, I think everybody earns this. The reality is for anybody going through this, and ourselves included, there is always the kind of weight of an elephant on your chest when you wake up in the morning. And uh, the stakes change as you grow. Uh, and, and as many times as we thought we were out of the woods, we weren't. There's always something. And trash, explosions, 
dirty drains. Like, I, I don't even know what's going to happen next. Uh, but we assume it'll keep happening. And so, you know, my encouragement for anything tonight is that the, the path of the entrepreneur, the path of legend, is a lot more about grit and tenacity and humility than anything else. And I'm grateful to be on a team with a lot of that. Um, and I know, you know, both the people up here with me today have a lot, probably a lot more than I, because they're further down this journey than, than we are. No. But it's relative, and um, if being a legend is this romantic, I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be one, but um, thank you for having us, and uh, I'm grateful to share stage with this crew.